Enki and the World Order. This is a great story about Enki. This is probably seven, 8,000 years old. You can actually go to etcsl.orinst.ox.ac.uk and you can look through various Sumerian scribes, stories, texts, translations, and here are the project members and the credits. They did an incredible job. I mean, this is various scholars at Oxford. And I'm going to go ahead and read this to you right now. Grandiloquent Lord of Heaven and Earth, self-reliant Father Enki, engendered by a bull. Hello, ladies. Begotten by a wild bull, cherished by Enlil, the great mountain, beloved by holy Anne, king, mace tree planted, in the Abzu, rising over all lands, great dragon who stands in Eridu, whose shadow covers heaven and earth, a grove of vines extending over the land, Enki, lord of plenty, of the Anuna gods, Nidamud, mighty one, of the Ikur, strong one of heaven and earth. Your great house is founded in the Abzu, the great mooring post of heaven and earth. Enki, from whom a single glance is enough to unsettle the heart of the mountains, wherever bison are born, where stags are born, where ibex are born, where wild goats are born, in meadows, in hollows, in the heart of the hills, in green, unvisited by man. You have fixed your gaze on the heart of the land as on split reeds. Counting the days and putting the months in their houses so as to complete the years and to submit the completed years to the assembly for a decision, taking decisions to regularize the days. Father Enki, you are the king of the assembled people. You have only to open your mouth for everything to multiply and for plenty to be established. Your branches, green with their fruit, do honor to the gods in its forests is likely a fleecy garment. Good sheep and good lambs do honor too. When the prepared fields will accumulate stockpiles and stacks, there is oil, there is milk produced by the sheepfold and cow pen. The shepherd sweetly sings his rustic song. The coward spends the day rocking the churns. Their products would do honor to the late lunches in the God's great dining hall. Your word fills the young man's heart with vigor, so that like a thick horned bull, he butts about in the courtyard. Your word bestows a loveliness on the young woman's head, so that the people in their settled cities gaze at her in wonder. Enlil, the great mountain, has commissioned you to gladden the hearts of lords and rulers and wish them well. Enki, Lord of Prosperity, Lord of Wisdom, Lord the Beloved of An, the Ornament of Eridu, who established commands and decisions, who well understands the decree of fates. You close up the days and make the months enter their houses. You bring down you have reached their number. You make the people dwell in their dwelling places. You make them follow their herdsmen. You turn weapons away from their houses. You make the people safe in their dwellings. When Father Enki goes forth to the inseminated people, good seed will come forth. When Nidamud goes forth to the good pregnant ewes, good lambs will be born. When he goes forth to the Beacon cows, good calves will be born when he goes forth to the good pregnant goats. Good kids will be born. Huh? If you go forth to the cultivated fields, to the good germinating fields, stockpiles and stacks can be accumulated on the high plain. If you go forth to the parched area of the land, Enki, the king of Abzu, rejoicing in great splendor, justly praises himself. 
My father, the king of heaven and earth, made me famous in heaven and earth. My elder brother, the king of all the lands, gathered up all the divine powers and placed them in my hand. I brought the arts and crafts from the Ikur, the house of Enlil, to my Abzu in Eridu. I am the good seaman, begotten by a wild bull. Bingo! I am the firstborn of Anne. I am a great storm rising over the great earth. I am the great lord of the land. I am the principal among all rulers, the father of all the foreign lands. I am the big brother of the gods. I bring prosperity to perfection. I am the sill keeper of heaven and earth. I am the wisdom and understanding of all the foreign lands. With Anne the king of Anne's dais, I oversee justice. With Enlil looking out over the lands, I decree good destinies. He has placed in my hands the decreeing of fates in the place where the sun rises. I am cherished by Ninter. I am named with a good name by Ninhursaja. Ninhursaga. I am the leader of the Anuna gods. I was born as the firstborn son of Holy Anne. After the Lord had proclaimed his greatness, after the great prince had eulogized himself the Anuna gods stood there in prayer and supplication praise be to Enki the much praised Lord who controls all the arts and crafts who takes decisions doesn't this sound like Lucifer in a state of high delight Enki the king of the Abzu rejoicing in great splendor again justly praises himself I am the Lord I am one whose word is reliable I am one who excels in everything. At my command, sheepfolds have been built, cow pens have been fenced off. When I approach heaven, a rain of abundance rains from heaven. When I approach earth, there is a high carp flood. When I approach the green meadows and my word stockpiles and stacks are accumulated, I have built my house a shrine in a pure place and named it with a good name. I have built my abzu a shrine in and decreed a good fate for it. The shade of my house extends over the pool. By my house, the Sahur carp dart among the honey plants, and the Eastoop carp wave their tails among the small gizzy reeds. The small birds chirp in their nests. The lords pay heed to me. I am Enki. They stand before me, praising me. The Abgal priests and a brig officials who stand before me distant days the income and nincom officials organize they purify the river for me they the interior of the shrine for me in my abzu sacred songs and incantations resound for me my barge crown the stag of the abzu transports me their most Delightfully, it glides swiftly for me through the great marshes to wherever I have decided it is obedient to me. The stroke collars make the oars pull in perfect unison. They sing for me pleasant songs, creating a cheerful mood on the river. Neger Sig, the captain of my bards, holds the golden scepter. For me, I am Enki. He is in command of my boat, stag of the Abzu. I am the Lord. I will travel. I am Enki. I will go forth into my land. I, the Lord, who determines the fates. I will admire its green cedars. Let the lands of Maluha, Megan, and Dilman look upon me, upon Enki. Let the Dilman boats be loaded with timber. Let the Megan boats be loaded sky high. Let the Magellan boats be Maluha, transport gold and silver, and bring them to Nibru for Enlil, king of all the lands. So let's go back here for a second. Time out. Enki just said that he's loading up boats sky high, transporting them with gold and silver, and bringing them to Nibiru for Enlil, which is king of all the lands. Enlil, Yahweh. What is Nibiru? Where is Nibiru? Okay, I'm going to continue now. He 
He presented animals to those who have no city, to those who have no houses, to the Martu nomads. The Anunnagods address affectionately the great prince. Prince? Lucifer is called the prince who has traveled in his land. Lord who rides upon the great powers, the pure powers, who controls the great powers, the numberless powers, foremost in all the breadth of heaven and earth, who received the supreme powers in Eridu, the holy place, the most esteemed place, Enki, Lord of heaven and earth, praise. All the lords and rulers, the incantation priests of Eridu, and the linen-clad priests of, of summer perform the purification rites of the Abzu for the great prince who has traveled in his land. For Father Enki, they stand guard in the holy place, the most esteemed place. They, the chambers, they, the emplacements, they purify the great shrine of the Abzu. They bring there the tell juniper, the pure plant. They organize the holy in the great watercourse of Enki. Skillfully, they build the main stairway of Eridu on the good quay. They prepare the sacred Uzga shrine where they utter endless prayers. For Enki, squabbling together, and the Sahermas carp dart among the honey plants, again fighting amongst themselves for the great prince. The Estep carp wave their tails among the small Gizzy reads, the Lord, the great ruler of the Abzu, issues instructions on board the stag of the Abzu, the great emblem erected. Bingo! In the Abzu, providing protection, its shade extending over the whole land and refreshing the people. The pillar and pole planted in the marsh, rising high over all the foreign lands, the noble captain of the lands, the son of Enlil, holds in his hand the sacred punt pole, a mess tree ornamented in the Abzu, which received the supreme powers in Eridu, the holy place, the most esteemed place. The hero proudly lifts his head towards the Abzu. Sir, sir, the boatman of the barge, the boat for the Lord. Niger Sig, the captain of the barge, holds the holy scepter for the Lord. The 50 Lahama deities of the subterranean waters speak affectionately to him. The stroke callers like heavenly gam gam birds. The intrepid king, Father Enki, in the land prosperity was made to burgeon in heaven and on earth for the great prince who travels in the land. Enki decreed its fate. Summer, great mountain, land of heaven and earth, trailing glory, bestowing powers on the people from sunrise to sunset. Your powers are superior powers, untouchable, and your heart is complex and inscrutable, like heaven itself. Your just matrix in which gods too can be born is beyond reach, giving birth to kings who put on the good diadem, giving birth to lords who wear the crown on their heads. Your lord, the Honor, Lord, sits with Anne the king on Anne's dais. Your king, the great mountain, Father Enlil, the father of all the lands, has blocked you impenetrably like a cedar tree. The Anuna, the great gods, have taken up dwellings in your midst and consumed their food in your Giguna shrines among the unique and exceptional trees. Household summer, may your sheepfolds be built and your cattle multiply. May your Gaguna, touch the skies. May your good temples reach up to heaven. May the Anuna determine the destinies in your midst. Then he proclaimed. Then he proceeded to the sanctuary of Urim. Enki, lord of the Abzu, decreed its fate. City which possesses all that is fitting, bathed by water, sturdy bull, author of abundance that strides across the mountains, rising like the hills, forest of Hasur cypresses with broad shade, self-confident. May your perfect powers be well directed. The great mountain Enlil has pronounced your name great in heaven and on earth. City whose fate Enki has decreed sanctuary 
of Urim, you shall rise high to heaven. Then he proceeded to the land of Maluha, and he, Lord of the Abzu, decreed its fate. Black land, may your trees be great trees, may your forests be forests of high land. And these trees, chairs made from them with grace, royal palaces, may your reeds be great reeds, may they, heroes shall them on the battlefield as weapons, may your bulls be great bulls, may they be bulls of the mountains, may their blowing be the blowing of wild bulls of the mountains, the great powers of the God shall be made perfect for you, may the francolins of the mountains wear cornelian beards, may your birds all be peacocks, may their cries grace royal palaces, may all your silver be gold, may all your copper be tin bronze, land may all you possess by plentiful, be plentiful, may your people, may your men go forth like bulls against fellow men. Ding dong, he cleansed and purified the land of Dilmun, he placed Nsikla in charge of it, he gave for the fish spawn, ate its fish, bestowed palms of the cultivated land, ate its dates, Elam and Marhasi, to devour the king, endowed with strength by Enlil, destroyed their houses, demolished their walls, he brought their silver and lapis lazuli, their treasure, to Enlil, king of the lands in Nibiru. And he presented animals to those who have no city, who have no houses, to the Martu nomads. After he had turned his gaze from there, after Father Enki had lifted his eyes across the Euphrates, he stood up full of lust like a rampant bull, lifted his penis, ejaculated and filled the Tigris with flowing water. He was like a wild cow mooring for its young in the wild grass. <coughs> its scorpion-infested cow pen, the Tigris at his side like a rampant bull. By lifting his penis, he brought a bridal gift. The tigress rejoiced in its heart like a great wild bull when it was born. It brought water, flowing water indeed. Its wine will be sweet. It brought barley, mottled barley indeed. The people will eat it. Huh? It filled the Ikur, the house of Enlil, with all sorts of things. Enlil was delighted with Enki, and Nibru was glad. The Lord put on the diadem as a sign of lordship, he put on the good crown as a sign of kingship, touching the ground on his left side. Plenty came forth out of the earth for him. Enki, the lord of the destinies, Enki, the king of the Abzu, placed in charge of all that, all this. Him who holds a scepter in his right hand, him who with glorious mouth submits to verification and the devouring force of the Tigris and Euphrates while prosperity pours forth from the palace like oil. And Balulu, the inspector of waterways, he called the marshes and gave them the various species of carp. He spoke to them reed beds and bestowed on them the old and new growths of reeds. He issued a challenge and he placed in charge of all this, him from whose net no fish escapes, him from whose trap no living things escape, him from whose bird net no bird escapes, who loves fish. The Lord established a shrine, a holy shrine, whose interior is elaborately constructed. He established a shrine in the sea, a holy shrine, whose interior is elaborately constructed. The shrine whose interior is a tangled thread is beyond understanding. The shrine's emplacement is situated by the constellation, the field, the holy upper shrine's emplacement faces towards the chariot constellation. Its terrifying sea is a rising wave. Its splendor is fearsome. The Anuna gods dare not approach it. To refresh their hearts, the palace rejoices. The Anuna stand by with prayers and supplications. They set up a great altar for Enki, in the E, and Gura for the Lord, the great prince, the pelican of the sea. 
he filled the Eker, the house of Enlil, with goods of all sorts. Enlil was delighted with Enki, and Nibru was glad. Enki placed in charge of all this over the wide extent of the sea. Her who sets sail in the holy shrine, who induces sexual intercourse, who over the enormous high flood of the subterranean waters, the terrifying waves, the inundation of the sea, who comes forth from the mistress of Sarara, Nancy. He called to the rain of the heavens, he as floating clouds, he made rising at the horizon, he turned the mounds into fields. Enki placed in charge of all this, him who rides on the great storms, who attacks with lightning bolts, the holy bar which blocks the entrance to the interior of heaven, the son of An, the canal inspector of heaven and earth, its cur, the bringer of plenty, the son of An. He organized plows, yokes, and teams. The great prince Enki bestowed the horned oxen that follow the tools. He opened up the holy furrows and made the barley grow on the cultivated fields. Enki placed in charge of them the lord who wears the diadem, the ornament of the high plain, him of the implements, the farmer of Enlil, and Kimdu, responsible for ditches and dikes. The Lord called the cultivated fields and bestowed on them molted barley, mottled barley, enki, made chickpeas, lentils, and grow. He heaped up in piles and early mottled and inuna varieties of barley. Enki multiplied the stockpiles and stacks, and with Enlil's help, he enhanced the people's prosperity. Enki placed in charge of all this her whose head and body are dappled, whose face is covered in syrup, the mistress who causes sexual intercourse, the power of the land, the life of the black-headed Azina, the good bread of the whole world. The great prince fixed a string to the hoe and organized brick molds. He penetrated the like precious oil and he placed in charge of them. Him whose sharp-bladed hoe is a corpse-devouring snake that whose brick mold in place is a tidy stack of hold grain for the ewes kula hu bricks in the land. He tied down the strings and coordinated them with the foundations and with the power of the assembly. He planned a house and performed the purification rituals. The great prince put down the foundations and laid the bricks and he placed in charge of all this him whose foundations once laid do not sag, whose good houses once built do not collapse, whose vaults reach up into the heart of the heavens like a rainbow. Mustama and Lil's master builder. He raised a holy crown over the upland plain. He fastened a lapis lazuli beard to the high plain and made it wear a lapis lazuli headdress. He made this good place perfect with greenery in abundance. He multiplied the animals of the high plain to an appropriate degree. He multiplied the ibex and wild goats of the pastures and made them copulate and he placed in charge of them the hero who is the crown of the high plain, who is the king of the countryside, the great lion of the high plain, the muscular, the hefty, the burly strength of Enlil, Sakan, the king of the hills. He built the sheepfolds, carried out their cleaning, made the cow pens, bestowed on them the best fat and cream, and brought luxury to the gods, dining places. He made the plain, created the greenery, achieved prosperity. Enki placed in charge of all this the king, the good provider of Iana, the friend of An, the beloved son-in-law of the youth Suen, the holy spouse of Inanna, the mistress, the lady of the great powers who allow sexual intercourse in the open squares of Kulaba, Dumuzid, Usumgal, Anna, the friend of An. He filled the Ikur, the house of Enlil, with possessions. Enlil was delighted with Enki, and Nibru was glad. He demarcated borders and fixed boundaries for the Anuna gods. Enki situated dwellings and cities and disposed agricultural land in the fields. Enki placed in charge of 
the whole of heaven and earth, the hero, the bull who comes out of the Hasur forest, bellowing, true solency, the youth, a two, the bull standing triumphantly, audaciously, majestically, the father of the great city, an expression for the underworld, the great herald in the east of holy, and the judge who searches out verdicts for the gods with a lapis lazuli beard rising from the horizon into the holy heavens, Utu the sun born by an ingal. He picked out the toe from the fibers and set them up the loom. Enki greatly perfected the task of women, for Enki, the people in garments, Enki placed in charge of them the honor of the palace, the dignity of the king, Utu, the conscientious woman, the silent one, then alone, lacking any functions, the great woman of heaven, and Nana, lacking any functions, and Nana came in to see her father Enki in his house, weeping to him and making her complaint to him. Enlil left it in your hands to confirm the functions of the Anuna, the great gods. Why did you treat me, the woman, in an exceptional manner? I am holy, and Nana, where are my functions? Aruru, Enlil's sister, Ninter, the lady of given birth, is to get the holy birth bricks as her pre prerogative. She is to carry off the lancet for umbilical cords, umbilical cords, the special sand and leaks. She is to get the silagara bowl of translucent lapis lazuli in which to place the afterbirth. She is to carry off the holy consecrated ala vessel. She is to be the midwife of the land, the birthing of kings and lords is to be in her hands. So there's still a lot to this. I'm just going to read the last paragraph here. And Nana, you heap up human heads like piles of dust. You sow heads like seed. And Nana, you destroy what should not be destroyed. You create what should not be created. You remove the cover from the semdrum of lamentations. Maiden and Nana, while shutting up the TG and Adab instruments in their homes, you never grow weary with admirers looking at you. Maiden and Nana, you know nothing of trying the ropes on deep wells, but now the heart has overflowed the land, is restored, Enlil's heart has overflowed the land, is restored in his overflowing heart of mankind. Lapis lazuli headdress is your prerogative, is your prerogative, is your prerogative, is your prerogative. Fascinating. Well, that's about 7,000 years old, you guys. So if you look at a lot of the connections there, another thing that I think is interesting that I had pulled up earlier, let me see if I can find this, is the... Hmm, no. Well, it was the previous podcast where I showed the... For the Oscars, they had a giant monument of the Ajiji and it looked like Anu and then the Tree of Life so Sumerian translations of the engineers of our current form and it's right in our face so what did you get out of this ancient text and did it connect some more dots for you with other biblical texts and scriptures whether it's the Holy Bible the Nakamata Treaties, the Vedas or cave paintings in France. I think that there's so many connections now that there's a very solid case to present the manipulation of our current form via off-world source. And when it says Nibiru is happy in this, what do they mean by Nibiru is happy? How does that make sense? Question everything. Leakproject.com. Be the change you want to see.